Hey everybody, Sarah here. Thank you so much for tuning into this video because if you know me or if you have watched my testimony video, then you know that my life has so not gone the way that I planned for it to go. And this isn't just in reference to my relationship status, but really just in reference to all of life, really. You know, the expectations and plans that I've had for my life and the reality to what's really been, what's been going on. I haven't been lining up. You know, the plans that I've made, the plans that God have made, they, they, they haven't been the same. And I know I'm not the only one. You know, I plan on getting a doctorate degree and becoming a clinical psychologist and having a certain amount of money in my bank account by this age and being married and having kids by a certain age. And I understand how easy it is to get frustrated when life it doesn't go how you plan for it to go or you're not where you want to be in life. And I totally understand it. So, you know, what are we supposed to do when life doesn't go how we thought it would go? So like always, I have three points that I want to cover with you guys in reference to this topic that I really pray are encouraging to you. So let's go to a passage that we all have probably heard and many have probably memorized. Let's look at Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, and I'm going to read it from the Eastern Standard Version. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. So the first point that I want to make is to trust God. The first thing that this passage tells us to do is to trust God with our whole heart. We can't trust him with some of our heart, but we need to trust him with all of our heart. The thing is, some of us don't trust God because we're too busy trusting ourselves and everybody else more and are therefore leaning to our own understanding. I've shared before how I've basically made an idol out of my own intelligence. You know, I thought because I was so smart that I really didn't need God, that I could just really live this life without him, but still attach my name to every, attach his name to everything. So I just trusted myself more than him. You know, I thought because I wanted to help people and because everybody already told me all the issues and their life story anyway, that I was supposed to be a psychologist. But the thing is, I was trusting in myself and the plans that I had made for my life more than I was trusting the Lord. So when they didn't pan out how I thought that they would, I was so frustrated and confused and I was lost. And so let me ask you, where does your trust lie? Are you trusting more in you and the plans that you've made for your life or the plans that somebody else may have made for your life? Or are you trusting God with your whole heart? The thing is, we can't trust our intellect, what we think is best, our emotions, our past, other people's opinions, or anything or anyone above the creator of the universe. I mean, who better to trust our life to than the loving, faithful, omniscient, omnipresent father? See, if my life had gone how I wanted it to go, I would seriously be so incredibly depressed right now. I would be incredibly stressed out and just completely miserable. But I'm so grateful that God interrupted my plans and that my life has not gone the way that I planned for it to go. Instead of giving me what I wanted, he really gave me what I needed. And I was really selling myself short by chasing my dreams and what I thought was best and didn't realize it until God put me in park and set my butt down. And he showed me that his plans and his ways are higher and better than anything that I could ever plan for myself. Because the thing is, we truly don't know what's best for us. We think we do, but we're not infinite like he is. We really have to trust God's steps and his stops for our lives and really allow him to work out his plans for our lives so that he can get the glory, which is really the ultimate goal anyway. So if you want the end result of him directing your path, then you first have to trust him with your whole heart. You cannot omit step one. Trust is the foundation to this thing. So the thing is, if you don't trust God, you're not going to walk by faith when he tells you to do something that doesn't make sense. You're going to continue to lean to your own understanding. And many of us don't trust that God's plans for our, for our lives are good and that his ways and his thoughts are higher and better is because we don't truly know God. A lack of trusting God stems from a lack of not truly knowing God. See, if you, you're you not going to trust somebody that you don't know, and that's even true in the natural sense, the better you know someone, the easier it is for you to trust them. So you have to truly understand God's character and who he is. And the only way you're going to do that is if you spend time with him in his word and through prayer and fellowship with other believers. If you know that God is a good father and that he's faithful and that he's loving and kind and omniscient and omnipresent, there's no reason you that you can't trust him. And I know a lot, another reason that I personally have had um, a hard time trusting the Lord is because I didn't want to let go of my life. If I can be honest, I'm a control freak and I just wanted to be in control of my life. So I didn't want to surrender my life to the Lord and to die to myself. And I know I'm not the only one. So the second point that I want to go over is to surrender your life to the Lord. 
this passage anyway, in general, is really about letting the Lord lead your life. And it's about total submission to the Lord and surrendering every area of your life to him. And we don't surrender our life to the Lord. It's because and die to ourselves is because we don't trust him. Again, trust is the foundation. If you skip trusting God and that's the foundation, then you miss out on him really directing your life. In order to even be a disciple or a follower of Jesus, we have to first die to ourselves and surrender our life to him. Let's quickly look at Luke 9 verses 23 through 25. And it says, and he said to all, this is Jesus talking, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? The thing is, because a lot of times because we're so busy chasing what we want and what we think is best, leaning to our own understanding, we're not really letting God be Lord over our lives. When you try to hold on tightly to your life, it's because in essence, you're too scared to trust God and you really lose your life and miss out on what God has for you. Things we begin, we become so afraid to surrender our life and our plans to the Lord because we think that if we do that, that we're going to stay single forever or that he's going to make us move to Africa and just do something crazy or we'll get married, but it's going to be to somebody that we really don't find attractive. I mean, he, I, but God, he don't look like Tyson Beckford. So the thing is, when you hold on to your life, you're showing what you treasure and what you love most. And that is achieving your wants, satisfying your desires, and you're ultimately not loving God with your whole heart. And something other than God has your trust and devotion. We begin to make those things idols and love them more than we love God. So we don't want to surrender and let go of those things and trust God, just letting go of that idea of marriage for some of you is hard. You know, letting go of that dream job is just kind of seems impossible. But Jesus tells us in Matthew 10 that we can't love anyone or anything more than him. And in Matthew 22, he tells us that we have, are to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul and all of our mind. So let me ask you, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or in other words, what is it gain, what is it profit a man to gain the house, to gain the car, to gain the job, to gain the spouse, to gain the kids, to gain the promotion and the salary, and just to gain everything that he's ever wanted in life, but lose his soul in the process? Is it really worth it? So you should really ask yourself, what am I holding on to? Have I made that thing, that person, that idea an idol? Do I love it more than God? Denying yourself literally means to surrender everything to the Lord, your hopes, your dreams, your desires, your accomplishments, everything. And to really let him be Lord over your life, it's in essence releasing control and rights of your life over to the Lord because our lives aren't even ours anymore anyway. You know, it's having a not my will, but your will be done attitude. And in order to do that, as I've been saying, you have to trust him first. You're not going to completely surrender your life and your plans to somebody that you don't trust. So when you trust God and you surrender your life to him, you're going to begin to acknowledge him and obey his directions. And that's the third thing that I want to look at is to acknowledge God and obey. So when I wanted to be a psychologist and, you know, to go to grad school and get my doctorate degree, I wasn't actually acknowledging God about my plans. I would just make my plans and forge God's name onto it. And I know I'm not the only one. Some of us, we just pray about a situation, but we never listen for a response. We're not actually asking God for direction. We're just telling him what we're going to do. We just pray because we're supposed to, you know, just check it off of the things that I'm supposed to do as a Christian. You know, we have no intention of actually obeying what he wants. Again, we just want to tag his name to it, to what we're doing. The thing is, I wasn't acknowledging God because I didn't trust him. Again, you have to trust him first. You're not going to consult somebody that you don't trust. The thing is, when we leave God out of the equation, we forfeit his presence. Then we forfeit all of the promises that are attached to him. We forfeit his provision, his peace, and his protection. So the thing is, instead of chasing what you want and what you think is best, we truly need to chase and pursue God and let him show us what it is that he wants us to do and what his plans are. We have to acknowledge him in all of our ways. We cannot compartmentalize and only trust him and seek him about certain things only when it's impossible for us or when it's too difficult. But we need to acknowledge him in everything, even the small things. Nothing is too big and too small for God. We need to acknowledge him even our daily activities. God, what do you want me to wear today? God, what's for dinner today? 
God, what do you, what should I do to my hair today, God? What color should I paint my nails, Lord? Really in everything. And the thing is, once you've acknowledged God and he makes the path straight, obey him immediately. If it doesn't make sense to you, if it's not a part of your plans, if it's something difficult, and even if it's something that you don't want to do. As I said earlier, you're not going to walk by faith if you don't trust him. Some of us, we, we seek God for directions. He makes the path straight and we still don't obey. I don't know about y'all, but it irritates me so much when somebody asks me for my advice and they still don't take it. What you ask me for? But we do the same exact thing to God. We ask him for his directions. And then when he does, when he tells us what to do, we disregard him anyway. There's no point in asking somebody for a direction if you're not going to obey. See, if I can be honest, um, I was in search of a new church home. So, you know, I was visiting different churches and I just found this church that I just loved. And God made it abundantly plain that that's not where he wanted me to be. Where he was directing me to go was not my ideal church. You know, he wasn't moving according to my plans and the guidelines that I had made for a church home. I was asking God for direction, but since I didn't like the answer, I delayed my obedience. And delayed obedience is still disobedience. You know, and I just didn't want to go to that church, to be honest. But one day I decided to stop having what I call a Moses spirit, you know, arguing with the Lord, just saying, but God, every time he tell you to do something that doesn't make sense to you. So I finally surrendered and just trusted God and obeyed him. And now I really see why he wants me at the church that I'm at and why he didn't want me at the church that I, will, I wanted to go to. So things we have to walk by faith and know that he's telling us to do something for a purpose. God has told so many people to do some crazy things in the Bible and they obeyed immediately anyways. I mean, look at Abraham. God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, the promised son that he waited decades for. Or if you look at the Israelites in Exodus 32, God told them to kill their neighbors and their relatives because of their disobedience and idolatry. Neither task made sense. Both tasks were difficult. It wasn't a part of their plans or anything that they wanted to do, but they obeyed immediately and we must obey immediately as well. We can't forget that these people didn't know how their story was going to end, but they still trusted God anyway. We forget that a lot of times because we know how their story is going to end, but we can't forget that this is real life events. Abraham didn't know that God was going to send a ram in the bush, but he was willing to let go trust God and obey immediately. And when you look at, you know, Abraham and Moses and Elijah and all these people who let go of their life, trusted God um, and, and obeyed immediately, God did ab exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything that they could ever ask or think. God blew their mind and he can do the same for us, but we have to trust him with all of our heart, surrender our life to him, acknowledge him in all of our ways and obey despite what it looks like. So if your life isn't going how you thought it would go, I really pray that you will implement these three steps and really just let God lead your life and obey him immediately. So until the next video, grace and peace. While a uh, tithe or a tenth of one's finances may be a good standard to use for Christian giving, it is clear that the early church did not focus on a spe uh, specific amount, uh, but rather on meeting the needs of the saints in the church.